The South Downs Planetarium and Science Centre is located in Chichester, West Sussex, and is one of the largest planetarium in the UK. We're an educational uh, trust um, and we're really proud of the fact that the planetarium dome can bring the night sky to people that perhaps wouldn't be able to see it because of pollution or the environment or where they live. So it's, it's really wonderful that we are able to welcome um, many, many visitors each year. In fact, it's about 16,000 and about 10,000 of those are children. Our story began in 1992 when first thoughts for a planetarium based in Chichester started with some very enthusiastic members of the local Astronomical Society. Huge support for the project was given by Richard Bunker, then Director of Education for West Sussex. And in 1994, the Kingsham Farm site, situated within the grounds of Chichester High School, was selected as being ideal for the planetarium. Now, this star projector was uh, built in 1977, and it was originally installed at the Armagh Planetarium in Northern Ireland. Now, when we started this project back in 1992, clearly getting a good star projector was key to the whole project. And we were very lucky in that the Armagh Planetarium in 1994 replaced this projector with a modern digital machine. So, in 1994, we had a site and the potential to buy a suitable projector. So, over the next four years, fundraising began in earnest, led by Dr John Mason, John Green and Sir Patrick Moore, supported by a lot of local businesses and individual sponsors. In January 1996, the South Downs Planetarium was registered as an educational trust, with Sir Patrick Moore as our patron. That same year, John Mason and John Green, founding trustees, travelled to Northern Ireland to collect the star projector. This was a monumental task involving lorries, forklift trucks and transport via Belfast docks of a very delicate and valuable cargo. During the visit to Northern Ireland, the two Johns became aware of some Boeing 747 seats which had been decommissioned and were available at Belfast Airport, and these were purchased by the Trust. In the autumn of 1999, sufficient funds had been raised to start the building of Phase 1. The construction work wasn't without its challenges, and the Kingsham Barn needed a number of major structural changes to house the equipment, technology, and most importantly, to create the dome. The roof was removed, the floor lowered in part, the walls raised, and a new roof was put in place to enable the internal dome to be installed. Major engineering work took place over six months, including the installation of a hydraulic lift to raise and lower the projector. Well, here we are in the main auditorium at the planetarium, which is basically a circular room, about 11 metres in diameter, with a hemispherical dome ceiling above. It seats 96 people, plus there are four wheelchair spaces, and at the centre of that auditorium is our magnificent star projector here. Slowly, the new South Downs Planetarium became a reality. After many hours of planning, testing and checking, Phase 1 of the South Downs Planetarium officially opened on Saturday the 5th of April 2002, with the Astronomer Royal Sir Martin Rees and Sir Patrick Moore. In September 2003, work started on Phase 2. This project enlarged and enhanced the foyer and reception area and was formally opened by Her Royal Highness Sophie, Countess of Wessex, in March 2006. Phase 3 commenced in January 2009. This major building addition provided a brand new lecture theatre to complement the dome. The Richard Bunker Hall was completed in January 2010 and now provides a classroom, convention meeting room, exhibition space and an area where visiting schools can eat their packed lunches. Our main goal at the planetarium is to provide a facility where people of all ages can learn about science in a very visual and exciting way. Our focus is on learning and we provide a wide range of presentations for school children, which both complements and supplements 
their national curriculum work and meets the basic educational needs of a range of ages and abilities. The planetarium projector itself projects four and a half thousand stars onto the dome above, plus the naked eye planets, Mercury out to Saturn, the Sun, the Moon, and a whole range of other objects as well. Now, the star projector itself consists of two main parts. There is the, the two star balls. This is actually the, uh, the uh, northern star ball here, and the southern star ball is at the other end. And then in between, you have a framework where all the planet projectors, the sun and the moon are located. And they're all operated off one long gear so that they move at exactly the relative speeds as they would in the real universe around us. Now, the two star balls, as you can see, each star ball has 16 of these black circular features. Each of those projects one part of the sky. The beauty of an old-fashioned optical projector like this is the stars are points whether they are bright or whether they are faint. Modern planetarium projection systems in general, which are digital, can only make brighter stars by making them bigger. And that's not the way it is in real life. We decided when we wanted to go for all dome video that we would not strip this out and put a system that did both the star projection and the all dome video as the same machine. We decided we'd keep this and we would add a separate system that would give us all dome video projection. Right, the full dome system essentially is two projectors and a very clever processor. The two projectors are diametrically opposite on the rim of the dome and each fill the opposite half of the dome, joining effectively in the middle. But the really clever bit is that the processor splits any given image into two, pre-distorts it and sends half of the image to each of the two projectors so that together they combine for a seamless image across the entire dome surface. This is the processor, of course, made, made by a local company. In fact, they market all over the world. The control is from the laptop that, that we see sitting over there or from a hand controller in the dome. The effect is really quite impressive you get a, a seamless, immersive sense of being within the video. So we are, in effect, what you might call a hybrid planetarium. We have the old analogue system, and we have a new digital full dome projection system as well. And that, I think, gives us the best of both worlds, and certainly the audiences of Becoming, since we've had both systems running together, have absolutely loved it. As this is looking to be one of the busiest marches I think we've ever had, because I don't think we've got any... Today, the planetarium is managed and operated by a large team of amazing volunteers and enthusiasts who have a passion for science and education and believe that learning should be fun. The South Downs Planetarium has got about 50 volunteers at the moment, and it's a very good thing that we do because we rely almost entirely on voluntary effort. We only have one part-time employee. Our volunteers come from an amazing range of backgrounds and they have tremendous skills. And this enables us to cover nearly all of the needs we have for expertise in almost any field that's relevant to running an operation like the planetarium. The interesting thing is that our volunteers vary in age, but they're split mostly between older people who are either getting towards the end of their working lives or who have retired and are looking for something interesting to do, but also numbers of younger people who've come up through education, perhaps looking for uh, a career in science or technology and wanting to get some hands-on experience of actually running an operation that's delivering an educational service in that sort of field. So I'm currently studying A-levels at the Regis School. I'm doing physics, maths and biology and I'm hoping to next year go and do a degree in astrophysics at either the University of Bath or Sheffield. I really enjoy coming here and being able to share my knowledge with all the people that come through the planetarium. 
It's like on public shows, I get to explain to them a lot of concepts because we've got so many posters out in the hallway and people quite often ask, like, oh, what's this? Oh, what, what's, what, what's this do? And it, being able to explain it to them uh, and being able to see that and then they understand, they're like, oh, I get that. Also, being able to explain all that stuff means that I've, it's good revision for me as well. The tricky bit for me, the job that I have to do, is to actually prepare each month a rotor so that we have all of the shows that we're doing, and that'll be a mix of educational visits by schools as well as public shows. And I have to make sure that there are enough duty managers and volunteers available to cover each show. But we've never yet had a situation where we've not been able to put on a show because we don't have a volunteer. And that speaks volumes for the sort of people that we've got, who know if we've got a problem of that sort, we know they're going to stand up and be counted and come forward, even if it's not entirely convenient for them. So that is a tremendous plus. There's only one other bit of star physics you need to know, that a star is a balancing act between two forces. A force pushing out we are very lucky to have Dr John Mason, who is a leading educationalist in all areas of space exploration and astronomy, supported by Graham Bryant and other volunteers in the team. In the middle of the sun is 15 million degrees. That's why you need that temperature to push those atoms together. One of the things that we get great pleasure from is when we welcome a primary school or a secondary school, and we can hear them coming up the road um, towards the front door. Um, and as they come in, there is this sense of wonder that we can feel from them as they come through uh, and start to look at some of the images and some of the things which they can see in the foyer. Once they're into the planetarium, there's a number of activities and, and quizzes and things that we do with them. But the main focus is when we are able to take them into the planetarium dome. If you can imagine a dome full of 96 children, you can imagine it can be quite noisy. But they are absolutely spellbound because once the lights go down and slowly their eyes adjust and they can see all those wonderful things and we can start to explain it to them, there is a real sense of wonder. We live in a universe of immense variety and beauty and few instruments have shown that better than the Hubble Space Telescope. This is probably one of the most famous and iconic of Hubble images, the pillars of creation. Three dusty fingers in the Eagle Nebula, seen in silhouette against the gas behind, and these dusty pillars are a few light years in extent, and we can see these uh, really beautiful regions. Some stars, when they grow old, blow themselves to bits in massive explosions called supernovae. Here we have the remains of a star seen to explode by the Chinese in the year 1054, 12 years before the Battle of Hastings. And today, if we look at the spot where the explosion occurred, we see the Crab Nebula. The, uh, the children, when they come to the planetarium, will not spend just the hour that they would have in the Star Dome with us, but several hours. So typically, a school group will be with us for uh, two, three, four hours at a time. So initially they are going to be received by the planetarium, we do the health and safety and then we get those children into the Star Dome and we give them a show really uh, just to augment what's being taught at school. Then we start some secondary activities with the children. The sort of things that we would do would be a lecture style presentation. Uh, one of those talks is the Apollo spacecraft. Now what I want to talk about over the next half an hour or so is what I think is the greatest journey that has ever been made. Anybody suggest what I, uh, what I think is the greatest journey that's ever been made? Yes. The moon. To the moon, absolutely right. We also have some meteorites, and this really is uh, a tactile element of the uh, time that the children spend with us. 
there's something very special about giving a child a piece of meteorite, which was a space rock, and to tell them that this is probably going to be the oldest rock or object they will ever hold in their hands for their entire life. And that's that kind of awe thing. Um, and um, it, it really does captivate the children. They're able to hold it. They often just feel the, the texture of the material, often trying to smell it. And we're giving a, uh, a story about the life of that piece of rock, right from being broken off of a asteroid uh, to its flight in the inner part of the solar system, entry into the atmosphere and landing here on Earth. And so we can talk about that and demonstrating by rubbing hands the friction or heat that you get when you do that. So it makes that a, a real live experience for them. And so in doing those and bringing those combinations together, we augment what is being taught in the dome and what's being taught in the school so that they have a good time, they enjoy it as well as learn an awful lot at the same time. Another group that visits us is the Royal Navy and um, we're delighted that they have chosen us to come as part of their um, qualification programme and officer training um, to study astronomy by navigation, by the stars. Now when we got this star projector and we set it up, we had to get it right in the centre of the hemispherical dome. Now we didn't realise at the time how important that would be because sometime after we started we were approached by the Merchant Navy and then the Royal Navy to do teaching for astro navigation. Now when we do that we basically calculate for a particular date and place where the stars will be in the sky if you do a sextant sighting and how you reduce those sightings to get your position on the Earth. It was very important, of course, that having done the calculations for a particular place and date and time, that the stars in the dome were exactly at those right positions. The uh, star projector has a lot of attachments on it. You can see various bits hanging off it. And those provide a whole series of grids and lines and graticules which you need for teaching astronavigation. That's another advantage of having an old star projector like this. It has all those additions which enable us to do something that probably no other planetaria could do in the same way as we do. And the Royal Navy have been coming here really from the early years and bring quite a lot of their officers here uh, over the year. And we also have the International Navy School coming here who bring officers from navies around the world to learn about astronavigation here. So that's a really nice thing to be able to do. And it's thanks not only to the Star Projector itself, but the way it was set up right at the beginning that enables us to continue to do that. A lot of the things <laughs> that um, we're going to do today are very hard to do in the classroom. We also have the teacher training and teachers come who are studying to be uh, primary and secondary teachers in sciences and we're able to open their eyes to different aspects of astronomy and where it links into chemistry, um, biology uh, and the other uh, sciences and the teachers come here and it gives them a chance to explore these things in a safe environment, ask the questions and we, I, I think that we give them the confidence to go back with their classes and actually um, introduce astronomy into their um, curriculums in, a, in a, a confident way. The last job I do every night is I basically set up the dome for the morning of the next day. So every day the dome is exactly set up for the way the sky will be for here or wherever we're going to be on that particular date. You can also go forward and backwards in time. One of our most popular shows is the Star of Bethlehem show that we do every Christmas, where we go back to the period between 7 BC and 4 BC, and we recreate the sky that the wise men might have seen. We also have had a number of special events, birthdays, wedding anniversaries, where we've gone back 40, 50, 60, 70 years, and we've recreated the sky for the night someone was born, or the day someone was born, or whatever. Occasionally, we host special observing sessions off-site. These events give us an opportunity to invite the public to safely observe the sun, 
by using our solar telescope during the day and then in the evening to observe the wonders of the night sky with the planetarium team and telescopes. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. July 2019 marks the 50th anniversary of man's first landing on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The world will look back on that first step for mankind and how far we have journeyed since. This represents a major focus for us at the South Downs Planetarium and we are already planning a number of unique events to celebrate this milestone. Five, four, three, two, one. What of the future? And liftoff at dawn. The dawn of Orion and a new era of American space exploration. Space exploration continues. NASA and the European Space Agency are already on a journey to Mars with the goal of sending humans to the Red Planet in the 2030s. We are already introducing sessions for students on the possibilities of what Mars might hold for humankind. Who knows? The studies of some of the students visiting the planetarium may take them on that journey to Mars. The planetarium continues to be at the forefront of encouraging and sharing the learning from all the missions and exploration. We keep pace with all the planned missions and bring the new knowledge to our visitors. The planetarium continues to upgrade and develop the facilities that we offer. New material is constantly being added to the presentations and this is ongoing. Our plans for the future include a programme of major refurbishment and building upgrades. We hope to include new interactive exhibits as well as new technology. Our aim is to continually inspire all our visitors and to share the wonders of the universe. The shows that we do are not about replacing the real sky with an artificial sky. This planetarium is all about encouraging people to go outside and look and learn about the real sky. It will never be about replacing the real sky with something that's artificial. Since opening, the aim of the trustees and the volunteer team has been to make visits to the planetarium a unique and memorable experience. By 2019, the planetarium will have welcomed just under 250,000 people of all ages since opening in 2002. We have travelled a great distance in that time, but our story doesn't stop here. As we move into the future with new initiatives and new developments, we continue our journey to the stars.